Hey guys, Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Today in this quick and brief video, I'm going to go over some of the new features within Note Life Factory 3, as well as some of my few first impressions. Now, the reason why I'm not going to be going in depth with all these new features is because Harry Frank over at Red Giant already has several tutorials uh, going in depth with all the new features and some of the cool stuff within Note Life Factory 3. So, I'm not going to be covering all that. He has it all down. And all the links for those tutorials will be down in the article down below. I'll also be having a lot more detailed descriptions, opinions, and just pretty much covering and reviewing the whole Light Factory 3 uh, plugin in the article down below. So definitely check that out. Basically, No Light Factory 3 just came out today. And I got a chance to try it out thanks to Arn Rabinowitz. So many thanks to him. If you guys want to give it a try, go ahead and download the free trial over at Red Giant Software. Links will be in the article down below. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop into After Effects here. I just have a very basic scene set up here with No Life Factory 3. So it's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and hop into my uh, setup composition here. And let's go ahead and apply the new No Life Factory 3, which has some major huge improvements as well as new features. So if you go into No Life Factory, the first thing you're going to notice is that we don't have a myriad of variations of No Life Factory. We just simply have Light Factory, No Light Factory, Easy, none of those variations here. And you'll see why in a second. But if we apply No Life Factory, and right off the bat, you're going to get a lens flare. And by default, this is a really good lens flare compared to the previous default lens flares included in No Life Factory, as well as optical flares. So, you know, right off the bat, it looks really, really nice already as it is. And uh, you'll notice that we have different tabs as well as different names for these tabs. So, something new right off the bat. And um, now the first tab we have is the location, which obviously controls the location. We also have the ability to use lights, so just pretty much tracking lights like optical flares. We can also control which flares get attached to which lights by changing the source name of the lights here. So pretty useful. And we also have a location layer. So pretty basic stuff. Let's go ahead and move on to the next tab, which is the obscuration tab, which I think they did a fantastic job on because it's simply not just, you know, pixel blocking pixel. So you select a layer and that layer acts as kind of like a mat or a shield over the lens flare. It's a lot more clever than that. So I'm not going to show it again in this demonstration, but her again, Harry Frank has an in-depth tutorial on this. But, but basically, you can select an obscuration layer, and then you can also define you know, what type of obscuration you want. So maybe that layer has an alpha channel, then you want to use that as a mat to kind of drive your obscuration. Uh, you can do that. You can also use luminance, which I think would be very, very handy whether you're doing a shot in the sun with leaves or trees or mountains or whatever. You can use the luminance of that particular layer and use that to maybe block off um, some of the light here so the obscuration type is very very clever very very useful and is definitely a huge improvement from the last version so really really handy here I'm definitely gonna be using it and I'm really glad that they added this feature in you can also control the source size as well as the threshold for the obscuration so this is very very handy if you want to control you know how much obscuration you want depending on you know how bright the luminance is etc so really great improvement here and a really great feature added let's go ahead and go into the lens tab and this is pretty much where you control the uh, lens flare itself such as the brightness the scale and the generic tint color as well as some of the angles here for some of the elements we also have the ability to control the depth scale which again Harry Frank covers but it's pretty much the ability to kind of scale your lens flare depending on the position of your flare, we you know where it's further away, it's gonna be smaller, etc. So pretty useful feature that gives you a lot of control. Now the two new tabs I'm really, really excited about is the behaviors tab as well as the edge reaction. So the behavior tab allows you to control pretty much the behavior of the lens flare, how it's gonna react, such as uh, maybe flickering, you can also select pulse, strobe, blink, and it just gives you a very fast and easy way to create dynamic movement and uh, animation with your lens flare so perhaps you want flickering you can switch that on you have tons of parameters to control such as you know, the randomness the brightness max the brightness minimum so a lot more control than uh, optical flares itself you also have the ability to offset stuff and control the cycle so by default a pretty nice uh, flickering here and again you have many other options which Harry covers in another separate tutorial over at Red Giant here so pretty cool. Um, you also have edge reaction, which is kind of like dynamic triggering uh, within optical flares. 
So what edge reaction pretty much does is it changes and dynamically affects your lens flares as you bring your lens flare to the edge of the screen to kind of give it a spark. And again, it just makes things a lot more dynamic, a little bit more realistic and not as static here. So uh, if we bring it over here, you can see that nothing happens. And that's because our edge react is set to zero here. But if we just increase that value, when we bring it to the edge, it kind of just reacts to the edge here, it kind of gives it this really nice rim which is you know pretty cool. You can also make it smaller by decreasing the value here. So if we uh, bring the lens flare to the edge, it's gonna get smaller now. So a lot more control than optical flares once again. Now you can also visualize the field, which is very, very useful here. So as you can see, you can see the kind of edge reaction field here. And then we can change the feathering of the field. We can also change the width of the field. So it's very, very useful for to visually see where your edges are and uh, when your lens flare is gonna react to the edge here. So very useful. Now the last tab is the rendering tab, which pretty much uh, just has the ability to unmelt your lens flare, which means that it's gonna get rid of the black so you can see uh, kind of transparency through your lens flare, which allows you to composite into your scene a little bit better. I like to set my lens flares to add or screen most of the time, but uh, this is a nice feature too if you need uh, an alpha channel here. So pretty cool. Now one last thing I wanna take a look at is actually a big change and that is the uh, options panel of No Light Factory. So the interface of the No Light Factory lens designer is very, very similar to the Magic Bullet Suite uh, UI here. And as you can see, we get tons and tons of presets with No Light Factory 3. A lot of these presets were designed by John Knoll, who is a very, very famous uh, visual effects supervisor for industrial lights and magic. So pretty fancy there. Now, a lot of these lens flares are also created by Harry Frank. So really high quality stuff. And I truly always believe that No Light Factory always had better looking flares, or at least the presets had better looking flares than optical flares by far. Just something about the, the way the elements are and how they're designed within No Life Factory. It just looks a lot more superb and a lot more professional and clean than uh, optical flares, even compared to the pro presets. And that's probably partly due to the fact that so many people use optical flares and it's so overused, at least the presets anyways. So again, these are very, very high quality presets. And again, the interface is fantastic. And just like the previous versions, you can always go back and customize these presets. You can also add more elements, except it's a lot easier this time because everything is just laid out perfectly. You have a lot more built-in elements, as you see here, and you can simply add one by just clicking on them. And then, of course, you can go back and then, you know, hide them, solo them, and uh, edit all the parameters here. So it's very, very, very well thought out. It's very easy to customize and change things and add things. And the layout just works, and it'll definitely boost your workflow if you use No Light Factory quite a bit. So right off the bat, I'm already liking the interface. It's a lot easier now. It's a lot more clean, and it's really well designed. So this has just been a really, really brief overview of the new No Light Factory 3 that just came out today. Again, I'll have a more in-depth review as well as new features and stuff like that and resources down in the article below where I'll be covering the whole plugin. So definitely check that out. So that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy No Life Factory 3. I know I am. Until the next time, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye, guys.